All right. Um, if you if you can hear me, can anyone confirm that you can hear me? Just type on the chat, please. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot for bearing with me. I was having a bit of a of computer problems here. Um, I am speaking from Barcelona, Spain. My name is Flavio, uh, and I well, I'm, a, I'm Apache member, and I consider my home and Apache to be projects like um, Zookeeper and uh, and Bookkeeper. But today, I, I won't be telling you about those projects. I'll be telling you about a different project that uh, I have been working on called Provega. Provega provides storage for streams. And we have been developing this for the past few years. I am a senior distinguished engineer at, at Dell. And my main role in, uh, in Apache, uh, in, Apache uh, in Provega is as, a, as an architect. So let me tell you a bit about uh, the context of Provega and, uh, and what it does and what problems it solves. If you think of a, a lot of data analytics um, scenarios today, a lot of them have uh, data sources that continuously produce data, um, at least some of the data sources, if not all of the sources. And th that kind of pattern of continuously producing data maps very naturally to how we think of a stream or intuitively how we think of, a, of data streams. It's even though it's not, a, it's not restricted when we talk about continuous uh, data sources, even though it's not restricted to machines, it's important to notice that in the past, in the recent past and, and, and today, we're getting more and more cases where the data is machine generated. As I mentioned, uh, we can have end users as well producing updates, uh, transactions out of online shopping, all that kind of stuff. But machine generated data is becoming more and more relevant and we expect to have more cases like that. And so one question that we asked ourselves and we have set ourselves to, to answer is what is the role of storage in that uh, streaming analytics world? And Provega is precisely about that, is a system that uh, we have uh, imagined for uh, applications, for scenarios in which streaming is, is, um, is very important, maps naturally the way that data is generated and processed. Now, Provega, as I mentioned, is storage for streaming data. It provides a number of, uh, of relevant features in the context of, uh, of streaming. For example, it enables um, an unbounded amount of data per stream. And the way to, we do this is by tiering data to horizontally, horizontally stable storage. Uh, but it's not only about uh, unbounded amounts of data per stream. We also make streams elastic so it can grow and shrink the, the, the parallelism of a, of a stream uh, dynamically, depending on the workload that is, uh, that, that is receiving. Uh, on top of all that, we make it consistent. We enable transaction appends. We track positions of, uh, of, uh, of writers to avoid duplication, missing messages, and such. Um, we guarantee order on a per routing key basis to uh, provide uh, properties that enable correctness for applications. And performance is also key to what we do. High throughput and low latency uh, are, are, are part of our bread and butter, what we try to achieve. And in fact, I'll, I'll show some performance numbers later in the, in the presentation. So this is a project that has been uh, under development since 2016. It's part of a, of a Dell EMC product, a platform product called Streaming Data Platform. But the core of that platform, which is Pravega, is entirely open source. So I, I'm showing on screen two, um, um, two, two links, one for the main website of Pravega and another for our repository. You, it, it's being actively developed. Our, all of our work in Pravega actually happens on that repository. So I encourage everyone to go and, uh, and check it out. In this particular talk, I'll be focusing on the following. First, I'll, I'll say a few more things about streaming data to motivate our work. Then I'll introduce Provega, talk about key concepts, architecture, the read and write paths. Um, then I will talk about one interesting aspect. Um, 
I, I mentioned scaling, which I'll talk more about, but if you if you think that streams are changing dynamically, how does reading from that stream happen? So I'll, I'll talk about that. Then I'll say um, a few things about abstractions beyond streams. So the kinds of abstractions that we can build using the, the, the basic construct of Provega. Uh, then performance, then I'll wrap up. So these are the topics I, I plan to cover during this talk. So let's go into streaming data. So th this is a very simple model of, uh, of key components of a, of a, of a stream um, of a stream application. Of course, this is simplifying a lot. I don't expect this to represent every single aspect that is important, but it captures the aspects that are that are relevant for this discussion. So it has a data source. The data source is not a single element. If we're talking, for example, about sensors or servers, there could be multiple of them. And they are producing uh, parallel flows of events. Then I have a data processor that could also have some degree of parallelism uh, or be part of my complex pipeline. And that data processor is taking those events, processing it, and generating some output, some visualization, dumping to a database that you can query against. Uh, all those are, are potential options. Concrete examples are sensors that are continuously producing sensed values. Uh, we, we have seen talks uh, about databases where we have, I don't know, change data capture, uh, event sourcing. So updates out of a database can also constitute uh, a, a good a good use case where we map again all those updates to uh, to, to uh, flows of events. Again, it's not only about machines; it could be about end users as well. We can have end users producing updates in a say a social network or query logs if it's against a search engine uh, or transactions if it, if it's online shopping. Um, one interesting example, which which um, is not really about events, is the one of uh, video streams. So. I'm adding video streams because, again, that's um, that's a, a very important use case today, and those cameras will be producing uh, data continuously, streams of uh, of videos continuously. There could be many of them, and video analytics is uh, is very important for uh, a vast number of applications. Now, in our work, uh, a few of the things that uh, that we have observed. So let me mention them. Them. We have seen some scenarios where um, users are really interested in, in capturing data from drones, um, data like video streams and telemetry. Um, and that could be for very different scenarios from inspecting uh, cattle health to inspecting airplanes between flights. And they wanted to ingest that data and tail the data of, uh, of, uh, of those streams, but at the same time accumulate data so that it can be processed um, later on. And so they were interested in building a, a unified uh, pipeline or a, a unified workflow in which they could both process tail and, and historical data using pretty much the same, um, same infrastructure. And very similarly, we have cases with uh, industrial IoT where in a factory floor you have um, cameras and, uh, and sensors continuously producing data. And we also here want to capture that data uh, tail the, the 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 stream while processing, accumulating and performing some historical processing over that data later on. So that's another um, general use case that we have observed in our work. Now going back to um, going back to the the, the 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 model, the simple model that I mentioned before. There are two very important aspects that uh, that uh, I want to highlight for this um, for the simple pipeline. Uh, that applications care about. They're not the only ones, but they are, they are the ones that are important for this discussion. So the first one is a lot of applications, they, they want streaming because they want low latency between the data being produced and the output reflecting the processing of that, uh, of that data. So they, they need that for, uh, for low latency. And um, this is, of course, a model that, uh, if implemented, is reflected in a, in a distributed system. And as any other distributed system, uh, components crash, they disconnect, uh, we have network problems. So all those are possible. So having um, a reliable path that ensures that the data that is produced is eventually processed is very important. Now, when the data or those events catch the data processor, the data processor uh, produces an output, so takes the event, produces an output, 
Um, what do we do with the events at that point? So do we throw it away? Do we keep it? What do we do? So a number of applications will choose to, uh, to get rid of it. So they have processed, they produce whatever output they needed, and they are done with it. But there are many reasons for, uh, for maintaining EK around. So a few of them would be that you want to reprocess data. Um, you find you found a bug in your uh, in your application. You wanna you wanna roll back and, and reprocess data, uh, or you simply have a job that that cares about uh, a later state of the data, the data from six months ago, the data from a year ago. Um, and also, you are deriving data out of that processing, so you might want to keep the data around for lineaging, lineage, and, and auditing purposes. So those are some reasons for uh, for keeping it around. Now, one way of doing this is to fork that output from this stream and, um, and uh, copy that data on storage, say on a file system or on some object store. Um, so that's one option. But one question to ask is, you know, so this part of the flow, in that part of the flow, I'm persistent data. So why can't we just leave the data there? Why can't I just consider that part of the path my, um, my storage? And that brings me to the question of you know, storage for streams. Um, have, have, what have we done about that? So if we start from traditional storage, the typical primitives you'll see are the files, objects, blocks, which um, do not capture the right level of abstraction that we want for streams. Messaging systems are much closer to that. So they provide rich semantics with respect to messaging, but Part of the problem is that it provides, they typically provide limited durability because they rely on broker storage for that. And what we really want is a stream as a first class storage primitive. And given the way we, we are thinking about it, uh, we strongly believe that uh, the, the, the continuous data sources that we have and the number of applications that, are, that have them, um, it makes sense for us to make this popular, just like files have been for, uh, for, for many decades. Um, but with the streams and the way we are generating and processing them today, it's just much more natural to have uh, to have streams for, uh, for for capturing this data. Uh, we can reason about them using parallelism, uh, scaling, uh, transactional rights for consistency, and files and objects do not abstract those away. Of course, it's not to say that they are not useful in this scenario, files and, and objects. Uh, in fact, when I talk about the architecture, we'll see that uh, we, we, we rely on them. But it, it is important that what we use to build our systems is based on uh, on, on streams. And it, in just reasoning about streams themselves, why I want to keep that as a stream, well, streams enable tailing in historical processing indistinctively. So I can move my point in the stream so that I, I can tail the stream or process historically using that same abstraction. Um, it can also be the source of truth for materializing different views. If I treat my stream as a log, I can generate tables, graphs, time series out of uh, out of that of that data. So this is um, this is at a high level what we would like to achieve. So now let me move move on and talk about uh, Provega. So the system that we have um, we have designed and implemented to materialize this 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 vision of a uh, of uh, of storage for streams. So the basic construct that we have in Pravega is a stream segment. So the stream segment is the storage unit of Pravega. It's, in its very essence, it's an append-only sequence of bytes. Um, note that it's bytes, not events, messages, or records. Uh, we do not care about the framing at the, at the segment level, and we, we just simply store the bytes. Now, at the API, when you, when you are uh, appending events, so those events are you know, rely on a serializer to transform them, uh, them into bytes on the way in and, and transform it back to an event on the, on the way out of the system. And with these stream segments, I can provide parallelism. I can have a number of segments in parallel that the, the, the data source can, can append to. And the way to map, uh, to map requests to append to the segments uh, can be done via routing key. So the application provides routing keys so that, uh, so that internally, Provega guarantees that uh, the events with the same routing key or the data with the same routing key will be uh, will be delivered in order. But very important, that degree of parallelism is not static in Provega. So say that I start the stream with, with two segments, S1 and S2. 
I can have that degree of parallelism changing uh, dynamically over time. So if I if I um, if my stream starts receiving more loads, then I, I can have a scale up event that um, steals the initial segments and create four new segments. So now my stream became went from a two segment stream to a four segment stream, providing more parallelism for a for for a pens. But I can go further if two of those if two of those segments um, get code, then I can seal them and transform them into one. So bringing the stream from a four segment stream into a three segment stream. So this kind of dynamics is uh, is what we expect from a from a Pravega stream, and so that it can adapt to workload changes uh, over time. There are the things we can do with stream segments. I won't be covered them here, but I want to mention um, tr transactions, uh, revision streams, watermarking. So those are all features that uh, that we have implemented, and they rely on um, on uh, on stream segments to to implement them. We rely on stream segments to implement them. Let me move to talk to uh, to talk about the Pravega architecture. So in in Pravega. Uh, talking about this, the, the event API, uh, an application would instantiate event writers. The event writers would append events to a Provega stream through a serializer produced the bytes that we append. Provega tracks the writer position so that we don't miss events and we don't duplicate events. Then on the read side, we have um, event reader instances. We group event readers into uh, what we call reader groups. And the readers in the group we split the load of uh, of segments among them, and we do provide the bit of growing shrinking that uh, that read the group uh, according to the application needs. That reading also happens uh, uh, in the presence of scaling, so it respects the predecessor successor relationship of uh, of segments. But we'll talk more about that a few slides down. So hold on to uh, to, to that thought. Provega has two um, has two main components: the controller and the segment store. So the controller manages the stream lifecycle and manages transactions as well. The segment store uh, doesn't know about streams; it um, it manages the lifecycle of segments. And one important part of, of that lifecycle is, is storing the the segment data. The unit of work of the segment store is segment containers. So what we do is we configure a number of segment containers to run across segment store instances, and we split the load of, uh, of segment containers uh, across all the segments store instances. The segment store relies on two storage dependencies. One, uh, the first one being the durable log. The durable log guarantees durability for stream data. We do not return to the application before we ensure that it's uh, that, that it's written to the durable log. And we use a long-term storage dependency to uh, to asynchronously write data there. And that's where we keep data long-term. Uh, that's that's long-term storage is expected to be uh, horizontally scalable. And we have options for both a uh, file and uh, an act for long-term storage. So this is configurable uh, for, for your deployment. For the journal, I think I didn't mention that, for the journal we are relying on, uh, today we implement that with Apache Bookkeeper. One important aspect I want to mention about the Pravega architecture is how we made the stream metadata um, scalable. So why do we even care about that? For, for two reasons. One is that we are aiming at building a, a, a scalable system. And as such, we need to be able to accommodate a large number of streams, a large number of segments. And not only that, I have talked about um, streams dynamically changing over time. So the metadata of those streams will, will evolve and, and will grow. So for example, if I need to keep the history of segments as I add more segments, then uh, th that history will grow. So we had the needs of, uh, of making it scalable. And uh, we have chosen to EU implement um, this abstraction of tables internally backed by segments that we call table segments. And we store the, the our stream metadata there. So a table segment is again backed by segments and it has an index that is built on segment attributes. So get segment attributes are key value pairs associated to segments that 
themselves are indexed with a, a B plus C structure. So we do not store string metadata in Zookeeper. Uh, we do store the metadata of, uh, of Bookkeeper in Zookeeper. So let's stored in Zookeeper, but our use of Bookkeeper is um, is bounded. Recall that we use that for uh, for the durable log, and uh, and we flush data to long term storage. As we flush the data to long term storage, the data in Bookkeeper in the durable log is eligible for uh, for truncation. So again, our use of uh, of Bookkeeper is uh, is limited. So that doesn't it's not a problem for us. But one thing that that Zookeeper does for us uh, is to is to help us implement some coordination tasks. For example, I mentioned that we assign segment containers to segment store instances. So that work is done by the controller um, via Zookeeper. And so, for example, if I have two segment store instances and I have six containers to assign, let's say that the the controller has chosen the assignment that we see um, that we see on the slide. Now later on. If we have a new segment store instance, then the controller can um, can reshuffle those uh, those um, those segment containers, and uh, and so then it distributes the load of segment containers to um, to uh, to the segment store instances. So that's one of the tasks that uh, Zuki uh, helps us execute. Now let me talk in in a bit more detail. Um, about the write and the, and the read paths, so that we get a, a better sense of uh, of what the flow is, how this and um, uh, how the different components interact with each other and, and the steps. So, when the event stream writer gets a write event uh, call to append an event e with a, a key k, then it needs to determine which segment is going to write to, and and perhaps even more important, it needs to determine which server to talk to. So if it doesn't have fresh information on segments, it will have to talk to the controller. So you'll get current segments from the controller. The controller will respond with segment ranges. Uh, segment ranges are, are they, they, they are the mapping of um, key ranges to segments. So the event stream writer will determine which segments it needs to append to based on the on the routing key. So it will request the controller uh, the the endpoints. For uh, for that segment, so the server it needs to talk to controller returns that. So once it has it, um, then it can talk to the server. But note that uh, it's not the case. The event stream writer needs to talk to the controller every, every time he needs to do it, right? So it does. It happens occasionally when he has say stale information. So for example, we had the scale events. We have new segments. The event stream writer needs to learn uh, what they are. So this is not an interaction that happens frequently uh, for a write event. Now, when the event stream writer determines which server to talk to, then it sets up a pen against a component called the pen processor on the server side. So the pen processor, it starts that, uh, that, uh, that uh, an append block. It starts an, uh, an append batch. That, and then the writer starts appending blocks of data to that batch. Then at some point, it, um, it calls a pen block end, which closes that batch and triggers a call to the segment store to append that batch of data. So segment containers are responsible for subsets of, uh, of segments. And so the, the segment store will route that append request to the segment, store, the segment container responsible for that particular segment. So the segment container will do a second level of, uh, of aggregation on the data. So perhaps we have data coming from um, from uh, from different clients to that same segment container, and then we'll append it to the durable log. Once it gets a response from the durable log, it will in parallel um, write the data to the cache and um, and respond to the append processor. So the append processor, once it gets that, it can respond to the event stream writer acknowledging that the data has been written. Now asynchronously, asynchronously. We'll write data that we take from the cache and flush it to uh, to, to LTS to long-term storage. At which point, the that same data in the durable log is eligible for uh, for truncation. The read path um, is not very different. Um, 
it, it, so the, if the event stream reader doesn't have the segment information he has to obtain in a similar way, then he has he will do a similar interaction with the controller to get a to get the endpoint. And uh, and uh, once it once it has the endpoint, it will read segment from the from the request processor, assuming it doesn't have data to return. Then the request processor will read that from the segment store. If the data is cached, then it returns from the cache. If it's a cache miss, then it reads from long-term storage. The segment store then returns that data to the request processor, responds to the event stream reader, and the event stream reader returns an event to the to the application. Note that we as we assume that this is a, this is sequential access that the application will be reading um, many events. We read ahead, and so the block that we are returning does not necessarily correspond to a single event. Uh, in fact. If there is enough traffic in the segment, you will be you'll be reading more data from uh, you'll be reading ahead and getting more data from the segment store for that segment. So before I finish the part this part about reading write paths, um, a few important comments about them. So the write path, uh, as we observed, is primarily driven by the sequential write performance of the durable log. So the performance of a, of a pending to stream is essentially is is primarily driven by that by by that durable log. The read path is is slightly different. So it depends on whether we talk about tail uh, tail data or historical data. So for tail data, we expect it to be served from the cache. Now for historical data, we expect to be reading from uh, from long term storage. So the sequential read performance of the of the long term storage will determine the the performance of reading. The read and the write and the read paths they meet in the cache, but when we talk about storage IOs, uh, the reads are separate from from writes because of the description I have given and the and the different storage dependencies that we use. And and a big part of the, of of the reason to do that was to reduce and random access on a, on access media. All right, so let me um, let me quickly cover what happens when reading. With scaling, so this is interesting because I'm, I want to read from a stream. Let's take the same example I mentioned before, and uh, and 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 um, I, I want to guarantee per key order as I'm as I'm reading from the from that stream. So, how, how does it happen? So let's say I have a uh, the, the, again same stream of the example with segments from S1 through S7, and I have a reader group with two readers. Initially, if I'm using the event stream API, that's also very important. The event stream API is the one that guarantees this. In a few slides down, I'll, I'll talk about a different API that, uh, that doesn't preserve that order. Um, it, with the event stream API, um, only segments S1 and S2 will be enabled for reading. So let's say that reader A acquires S1 and reader B acquires S2. So at that point, the readers are, are free to go and, uh, and, uh, and read the events. So now say, that, that reader A is done reading S1. So now S3 and S4 become enabled for reading. And now let's say that, uh, that soon after, reader B is also done reading S2, and now S5 and S6 are available for reading. Let's say that, uh, that the acquisition is such that reader A acquires S3 and S6, and reader B acquires S4 and S5. One uh, one. This is a this is a this is a valid uh, assignment. But one thing that I want to point out is that um, the 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 ranges of routing keys are now going to to different going to different readers. So this is important to note because the application needs to ensure that uh, that if if it needs to process according to routing key order, it needs to ensure that uh, that uh, it, it does it, it performs some steps that uh, to, to guarantee correct processing. So there, there's a mechanism that I won't have, I won't be covering here, uh, called checkpoints that helps the application um, achieve that goal. So okay, now let's say that readers A and B are done reading S3 and S4. Now S7 is enabled. Uh, we have reader B acquiring it, and this is the the final uh, assignment for uh, for the stream as the stream lies uh, right now. So of course I'm using a static snapshot of a stream for the sake of example, but it's not the case that uh, that the writers cannot be writing to the application, right? So this is dynamic. There could be even um, uh, we could even have more scale events happening as this as um, we have writers writing and readers reading. 
A different way of reading from the same string is to use the batch API. So with the batch API, we forget about order, and we just give iterators for all available segments at a time. And so the application can have um, different processes just reading from all those segments in parallel. So different from the event, um, fr from the event API, th there is no notion of continuous reading here. So the read is bounded, is bounded, and uh, and uh, the iterators will go up to a uh, up to that bound. But they can all read in parallel from the segments, and uh, and uh, again, we do not necessarily preserve order. And this is useful if uh, the application doesn't care about order. If you're trying to perform some global counts or just grab over uh, all events in a in a in a string, for example. One place where this could be useful is if you're familiar with Presto SQL, which is a SQL engine and enables um, uh, systems to implement connectors and process query, uh, SQL queries over external storage systems. Um, so if you're familiar with that system, um, we, have, uh, we have actually implemented a prototype where we, we read and process data from a Pravega stream and, uh, and we assign the split which is the the units of work that uh, in in um, for a connector in Presto, and we map those to the segments of a of a stream. So essentially, use the batch API to match segments to uh, to split, which is a very natural uh, match for the kind of processing that Presto SQL does for you. And one of the interesting things of this example, which is a, sort of a side observation, is that we can even do joins of stream data with other things like uh, object store data. And once we have such splits, we can uh, we can uh, give it to Presto tasks and have it execute as part of a of a SQL query. All right, so let me say a few words about uh, other abstra abstractions we have built on uh, on, on segments, um, which are not streams. I talked a lot about streams. There are other things we have done. So we have the state synchronizer. The state synchronizer enables applications to uh, replicate states. And it uses uh, as an underlying construct uh, what we call revision stream, which is, which is a single segment stream which accepts conditional appends. The condition is on a, is on the offset. The state synchronizer manages uh, generic states. The, the state is defined by the application, so we provide interfaces so that the application can do it. And the synchronizer takes care of uh, fetching updates, updating the state, updating conditionally compacting the state. So that's the API it offers and, uh, and allows the application to do that kind, of, uh, that kind of synchronization. And it can do things like other systems, um, Zookeeper, for example, have done for us in the past, like leader election, mem uh, membership. Uh, and even uh, in, in our own case, in the case of Pravega, manage um, the reader group state. So we, also, we not only expose that as part of the API, but we use it internally as part of the reader group coordination. Another one that uh, I have uh, that we have implemented is, is a key value table. So we have, as part of the API, the usual suspects like get, put, remove, and iteration over, over a table. Key value tables are implemented with uh, table segments. I mentioned table segments when I talked about stream metadata. And table segments are again backed by uh, by uh, by segments. So when we define a key value table, we determine the number of partitions we want for that table, and uh, and each one of those partitions again will be a, a table segment. All right. So the last part of the presentation is about performance. So we have conducted uh, an extensive amount of evaluation on the latest uh, uh, release of Pravega, Pravega zero eight. And I want to show a few of the graphs that we have. We are having, uh, we are publishing a blog post about it with a lot more detail in uh, in the next few days. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so that will give a lot more detail than I'm showing here. So here I'm starting with a graph that shows P95 write latency and and events per second. So on the on the x-axis, on both axes, we I have a, I, I have a log scale. So bear that in mind. But one thing, the two important uh, messages that I want you to take from this is that um, we are achieving over 1 million messages per second with latency under 10 milliseconds. And we're doing this for two types of, uh, of experiments, one in which I have one segment in a stream and another that I have uh, 16 segments. So this is one writer and the uh, event size of, uh, of 100 bytes. 
So the situation is not very different from, from end-to-end -end latency. We can obtain high throughput and, uh, and low latency also when looking at end-to-end, -end. Uh, when look at it end-to-end. -end. Uh, it, it's, it's a bit different for detail, for very high throughputs. There's a bit of an imbalance between reading and, and writing, and this is something that uh, we are currently looking to. But we are still able to obtain very high throughput and, uh, and, and low latency when, um, when looking at, end -to -end, um, at, at the end-to-end -end path. Another interesting experiment we have done is, given that it's core to Provega, um, um, to it's core to Provega to process historical data and uh, and catch up, we performed an experiment in which we have a writer continuously producing 100 megabytes uh, per second, and we keep readers asleep until we have accumulated 100 gigabytes of data. So at that point, we awake the readers and see if they can catch up with the writer. And the writer keeps writing, right? So it doesn't stop when we wake, the, wake up the readers. And we can see that Apravega is able to provide enough performance that the readers can, can catch up. So again, very important because historical data is very uh, is key to our very core to uh, the features and the kind of properties that uh, we want to provide to applications. All right, so that's all I wanted to, to say about Pravega. So let me, I'm ready to wrap up. Um, the state of Pravega, Pravega is not an Apache project. It does use Apache projects like Apache Zookeeper and Apache Bookkeeper. Our latest release is 080. Um, some of the highlights of, uh, of the release is the, the implementation of key value tables, the performance improvements, and uh, the schema registry implementation and integration, which is not really part of Pravega itself. It's a separate repository. And uh, and uh, but we we are releasing alongside with uh, Provega 080. Now, to conclude, um, the the vision we have set ourselves is to implement uh, is, is to provide the stream as a core storage primitive and implement a system that achieves that vision. So, as part of that system, we wanted to provide both. Um, both the ability of taking a stream and historic, uh, processing data historically. It's built on, the, on, the, on this construct that we call stream segments, which is very important to enable a number of features that I described, and it's open source. Um, some of the core features that I mentioned are stream scaling, transaction, ordered reads. Uh, as for the architecture, two important points I want to highlight is that uh, we separate IOs in the critical paths of reads and writes, and we make um, the stream data scalable by using um, by using table segments. As for performance, again, stay tuned for our post. Uh, a few highlights of the numbers I have shown is that we're able to achieve over one million um, small events per second uh, when when writing and single digit millisecond latency end to end. Uh, I also talked about experiment in which we do catch up over a backlog of 100 gigabytes while ingesting 100 megabytes per second and Provega successfully uh, provided the performance so that readers could catch up. So I'm not sure I have time for questions, but I want to provide a few links, uh, some references uh, about myself, email, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. Uh, and then a, a bunch of websites. So the Provega website, our blog, uh, that I encourage everyone to pay attention to, GitHub, and, uh, and our Slack. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm allowed to stay around to answer some of these questions. Um, I'm more than happy to discuss them uh, them offline. Okay. So let's see. Let's let's try to handle. Um, let's see if I can answer some of them if people are still around. Um, how do you handle the situation when bookkeeper store is out of capacity since LTS uh, is is um, is slower? Yeah, so we we do assume that we have enough capacity in uh, in the durable log because if we cannot if we cannot append to the durable log, then we we have to store the pipeline. We guarantee durability, and uh, and so that definitely needs to, needs to happen. Um, how? Low level does Provega go for optimizing read write at the harder level? For example, does this type HTTP versus solid make a difference? 
Um, well, of course, it makes a difference. So if you got uh, faster drives, it will it will be faster. But we do uh, we do tune the pipeline so that we accommodate the different um, the different say speeds of uh, of the storage that we're using, right? So so for example, if the S LTS is lower, we will apply back pressure and make sure that uh, that we are not uh, we're not appending faster than we can uh, than we can accommodate. Um, next question: Is Provega a topic engine with published subscriber clients, or, or should I use another framework to read write in Provega? If so, what can we use to read write data? Yeah, so um, you have the stream abstraction, and uh, you create a stream, and and you append to it, and you read from it, right? So it has. Um, we do use the terminology that's closer to storage reads and writes, but uh, but certainly you can use that in a in a pub in a published subscriber manner. So you don't need to go elsewhere. <laughs> um, is the stream message exactly once or at least once? It's, if exactly once, how, how to achieve that? So we provide both transactions and we provide, um, uh, as I mentioned, this will provide a mechanism to track the position of writers so that in the presence of these connections, we, uh, we, we guarantee that we are not duplicating or, uh, or missing data. I have actually given a, a couple of talks um, specifically about that. So we can either discuss offline or we can perhaps check some of my uh, my previous talks. Um, next question, where can I find more information about Elasticity and Provega? Also, can you share the slides? Yeah, so certainly uh, I can share the slides uh, about Elasticity on Provega. I mean, we have a number of, uh, I don't know, we have blog posts to talk about it. We have documentation on the website. Uh, there, there are Java docs, you know, there is Slack, you can interact with us and, and ask questions uh, if you have any. So go to all those references, interact with us, and we will answer your questions. What features are looking forward uh, the most in the, in the, in the future of, of Provega? Thank you, Dalvin. Um, what features are looking forward to the most in the future of uh, of, of Provega? So uh, we we have been working on a on a number of uh, on a number of things. One of the features that we have added and I didn't mention is a, a simplification of a, of a, of tier two, so that we can accommodate more storage bindings for uh, for long term storage. So that's one thing we're working on. Another thing is different client bindings. So I didn't mention this, but uh, but um, our client right now is we only have a Java client, but as we speak, we're working on new client bindings, and so we'll have more uh, more languages that I can you can use. So we we're looking forward to a, a more polyglot Provega in the near future. All right, so I think I have quickly covered all the all the questions. Um, if you have more questions, again, feel free to reach out to to me on Slack. Uh, to the team, uh, check the websites. That has a lot of information. And uh, thank you again for your attention. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you.